friends i am going to talk and share my thoughts on the intersections with which we operate daily and periodically but we never get a time to reflect upon it so as some of you might be knowing i have i have been working on the issues of gender for over the last 26 years and some of you might wonder on gender and a man talking isn't it surprising for some of you yeah it should not but for a majority of the people including those in the hall they equate gender issue as a women's issue gender based violence against women or gender based discrimination against women is by and large seen as a women's issue you know and i would ask a question that is it called as a women's issue because of peculiar problems of women or is it a problem because of the unequal power relations between men and women is it a problem because of the attitude of men towards looking at women and if that's so then it has to be equally a man's issue isn't it if men are part of the problem that means the attitudes are part of the problem and that is understandable how can we think of a solution without them you know so we are addressing just the tip of the problem in the last 30 40 years when the autonomous women's movement has been working we are seeing the results today what are we seeing women are getting more and more assertive about their rights you know talking about their rights at a wider platform but the other side men are feeling threatened they 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 fumble they don't know how to respond to see contemporary gender happenings because they have never been raised as men who can connect with the problem that these are equally their problems so i find today after the telangana rape case and a series of incidents of rape and killings of women the talk is again in a murmur what happened 7 years ago almost in the tragic case of the delhi gang rape what is the murmur about changing the male mindset but how many of us seriously deliberate on that the mindset has not come all of a sudden on one fine day the rape culture is thriving because we never gave importance to that topic in our day to day lives all of us have contributed to the entrenched kind of beliefs of misogyny by not doing our bit in raising our children or raising our boys so you know i find and when we talk about change a uh, breaking of binaries breaking of the gender binaries then transgenders are also to be connected with the problem so it's not just a problem only of women so i'm going to start my initial part on gender and its intersections among other genders so you know we we find examples of many around that we sometimes work in silos women's groups like to work with girls and adolescent adolescent girls and women there are lgbtq groups which like to work among the queer community and there are men's groups which are working with heterosexual boys and men trying to break the stereotype but all of us are working in circles you know i understand the importance of working with all these groups as per your mandate of your organization but the wider picture is that patriarchy doesn't work in a vacuum you know there are intersectionalities you know so i find that you need to engage men as a part of the solution you know to a problem that has been over the years seen as a women's issue now let's come to the other intersections gender again doesn't work in a vacuum as i said it works with other subsystems of society gender works with religion caste it also intersects with communalism it intersects with media it intersects with other subsystems of our society and other inequalities which are multiple so let's examine a few exam uh, cases 
the Khairlanji incident in, in Maharashtra, which was a blot in independent India, where an entire Dalit family was, you know, badly treated, they were, their bodies were, you know, hacked to death, you know, what happened in 2006. So, that incident really in an independent India, I would say, as a classic example of how, you know, different players, including, you know, media, including, uh, uh, you know, the other genders, including public administration, they connived and there was a conspiracy of silence. The persons who did the post-mortem of the bodies were bribed to give a false report, you know. And after one week of that incident, that incident was reported by media people. You know, thanks to an agitation which happened in Nagpur. So there was a connivance of players in the conspiracy of silence that surrounded that incident. We had incidents of communal violence across the country, whether it was the 1992 Bombay riots or the Gujarat carnage of 2002, you have seen that women from one dominant community were being instigated to fight and engage into the killings and brutal assaults on the women of the other community, the minority community. You know, these examples you know, what happened then in 2002 made the women's movement also sit and introspect because if all women are not the same, then this was an example how intersection really took place of different players, including of genders. So, and now let's come to gender and media. How the intersectionality happened? I was talking about the Nirbhaya gang rape incident. It was brutal and the way it was covered in greater detail. Compared to that, what about incidents of daily rape of thousands and lakhs of Dalit women, of women from the marginalized community who are raped, who are you know nakedly paraded for taking decisions about themselves? Those don't get reported. You know, so you find selective reporting, selective naming of survivors of violence, again an issue which talks about the intersectionality. So, my friends, you know, empowerment and assertion of the oppressed and the uh, transformation and sensitization of the powerful, they cannot be mutually exclusive agendas. They have to work together, you know. So we we realize that, you know, the question will arise that how do we address these intersections? They work as a complex web, you know, they are not simple, but at the same time, they will fester up again and again, and you and I have to take up a stand, you know, they will come up again and again. So, you know, we have pointers to tell how we can address, you know, Mahatma Jyotiba Phule, when he started the first school for girls in, Mumbai, in Pune, it was a place called Bhede Vada. And what was that place? Bhede was the surname of his very close friend who lent the bungalow to start the first school. So in starting that school in Bhede Vada, Mahatma Phule not just talked about the education of the disadvantaged girls, but he also conveyed a signal that my enemy is not Brahmins, but my enemy is Brahminism. The tendency which tells that my caste is superior and all other are secondary, which, which not necessarily be among the so-called Brahmins, but that tendency can be people of any caste, you know. So that was a clear message by Mahatma Phule that this tendency is our enemy and similarly so men is not our enemy but male dominated attitude is our enemy you know similarly another example of dr baba Sahib ambedkar the architect of our constitution dr ambedkar burnt a copy of manu smriti that had put sanctions on women on the restrictions of women this was in 1937 and when he burnt there his 
friends who were from the so called higher caste were standing in front of him so what was the message ambedkar also was trying to tell that my enemy is not brahmins but brahminism you know so these pointers are there with us we have to work in in tandem with all the other players we have to intersect with different players to address a multi pronged problem and at the same time we must also realize that if we are talking about human rights of for all actualization of human rights for all we must also realize that for the actualization of rights of disadvantaged and multiply disadvantaged groups you will have to understand what are the specific needs of those groups you know i'll give you an example of a place called koperdi in ahmednagar district of maharashtra 2017 there was a major agitation there a lot of outcry on the rape of a 15 year old girl in that village we all some of us know that the issue was politicized as to the girl is belonging to which community you know this girl was traveling from her village to an adjoining village for education and she was gang raped because she was on a cycle and she was visiting her grandfather now till date the issue is politicized but in her own village the school is still not built so you can understand that special needs of people we want education as a birthright of everyone education should be to all but education if it has to reach to the people and specially marginalized you have to take special efforts and an enabling environment so i find in the last 26 27 years in my own ways i have been addressing the issues of intersectionality through my work with young men and boys across india i have been providing safe spaces for young men to think about these intersectionality and what they can do their bit to address the problem and i find when you give such safe non threatening spaces they are able to connect the dots they are able to see the power relations they are able to see that how gender operates with caste and how it operates with media you know how it intersects so i find there is a dearth of that effort and if that effort is further widened out we will be able to address the issue in a more coherent way and i think uh, that's that's what is needed today concerted efforts which address the pluralism and the bringing together the inclusivity of the issue that can be possible when you sit and pause and reflect and look at the intersections in a dispassionate way thank you